So in 1993, you guys put out the follow-up album. So God shuffled his feet. The success of this album is insane. So I'm going to rattle off some stats and then we'll dig deep into this album. So there's four singles and we were joking earlier about how I'm supposed to say the title. So, mm, okay. So mm, 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 a number one single swimming in your ocean afternoons and coffee spoons. And then God shuffled his feet. So all four singles were top 20 hits in Canada. The first single went to number four on billboard hot 100. That is the chart globally. Essentially, if you're number four on that chart, that is as big as it gets. The album goes top 10 in the U S three times platinum in Canada, two times platinum in the U S the album goes either gold platinum or multi-platinum in 11 different countries. And it sells over 8 million copies worldwide. So all of this sounds like complete insanity to start. Then it gets nominated for three Grammys, which is as prestigious as an award nomination you can get as a musician and in three more Juno awards. So my question with all of that now out there in the ether, my question is almost no human being, will ever experience that level of success with an album in the music industry. Can you try to put into words what your life was like at the peak of that success for the rest of us peasants that just have no idea what that's like? Uh, again, I'm going to reiterate what I said earlier and that for, for the band, it was always about the music. And we were in situations, I mean, we went from playing uh, you know, maybe Massey Hall in 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 Toronto, which is which is prestigious and and uh, a, a wonderful gig to play. Maybe the to, best sounding venue in the world. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just it, well, it, you know, we played Albert Hall in 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 London, and that's. I mean, you just look out there, and and you're just in awe. Um, but we went we went from doing that to playing to. Uh, with our our personal record, which is 110,000 people in Tipperary Island, right? Um, but in both cases, whether it was Massey Hall or Tipperary, or the you know, we played a lot of arena shows, we played a lot of of uh, of shed shows. I don't maybe your listeners don't know what sheds are. Sheds are a, a big outdoor venues, but they're covered, uh, so they're they're generally you can put the 35,000 people out there but it's it's not like a stadium or an arena it's a an outdoor kind of an amphitheater which is so they're called sheds and we were playing sheds and uh on every, every night uh, our concern was making sure that the show was was as good as it can be uh every every night it was you know Dan looking over at me going okay let's let's lock in are we feeling like are we feeling the lock and and uh so uh, we we traveled first class in a lot of cases um, because that's what the industry dictated at the time. And in a lot of cases, it made sense because we had to cover a lot of ground. I mean, we were, we were, we were playing like a show in Toronto and then Vancouver and then Los Angeles and then New York. And then we'd be in Minneapolis and then we're in London and then we're in South Africa and then we're in China. And, and, and if you're not careful, you burn out really quickly. So you have to sort of alleviate, uh, alleviate the stress and the pace by hanging out and, 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 you know, traveling the most comfortable way that you can. Uh, so you just don't burn out. Uh, but still, our goal was always about the music and and what we were bringing to the table. Now uh, I'll interject a little story in there because it is it is kind of funny just to show you that we really had no idea of where we were in life. Uh, we I can't remember the city, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say just for the sake of argument I'm gonna say that it's Denver. And uh, so we had two tour buses. We had our bus, and then we had the the crew bus, and we pulled in behind the hotel that we we're staying in. And when we pulled into the parking lot, um, the, 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 there, there was probably like 2000 screaming fans, mostly girls in the parking lot, like losing their minds when we, when we pulled in. And so we looked at each other and we said, Oh, Hey, wow. We, we must be doing pretty good in, in, you know, in, in Denver to have this happening. And uh, so <clears throat> the, Bus door opens up, and I think it was either Dan or it was Brad, the first one to step off the bus. And and uh, the the crowd kind of calmed down a little bit. Like, they, they, they lost their minds for, like, 30 seconds, and then they calmed down a little bit. And we could hear one person going, oh, that must be the crew. 
And I was like, what do you mean? It must be the crew. So we managed to pull in, we went and checked in, checked in at the desk, we went up into our rooms. And uh, about maybe an hour and a half later, th- the scream started again. And they were like lost their minds. Well, they, it's, the bus that was pulling in then was in sync. <laughs> and so all these fans were there to see in sync, had no idea. Maybe one of them might have known who we were. Uh, but it was, for me, that was very sobering uh, at the time because A, when we pulled in, we did not expect any fans to be there. And when there were, we were really surprised by it. And, and you know, like, oh, wow, this is, this is, this is this is wonderful. We're we're rock stars, and and then humbling when they we get off the thing and they go, oh, that's that must be the crew. It turns <laughs> and, out they're looking for Justin Timberlake. So. Yeah, and 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 then you realize that you know here's here's the boy band that that's that's leaving you in the dust. So that was that was all a lot of a lot of our touring life was was like that, just sobering moments, and and uh, where let's let's just focus on the music and play the show the best that we can. So you know, was it was it um, was it the rock star life where we live in lavish lives? Uh, no, not at all. We we're I, I think everybody, as I said, when on that flight back from the Bahamas or from the Cayman Islands. Uh, very sobering, very, everybody very grounded in terms of, of what it means and where it's going and, and, you know, don't get too big for your britches kind of a thing. Uh, and humbling moments like that where it just keeps everything in check.